Hello, boys and girls. Bill, that owl guy here. And I wanted to do a, another video on these owl boxes that we make. Um, had some upgrades and some changes, and I just wanted to kind of go back over a few things with y'all. Uh, one of the boxes are, are cedar, okay? And they are water sealed on the outside. All right, the footprint on the box is about a foot square. So these are large nesting boxes, all right? And one thing we've done this year that's a change is we used to bevel these corners, okay? Now we're just doing a lap joint on them. And the reason for that is because materials were going up in price and I didn't want to raise the prices on my boxes. So I had to figure out another way to, to um, get these boxes to y'all at the same price. So what we did, we, we took away the bevel corners, which was actually taking away material in, to begin with. And what that did was cause me to spend less time building the boxes. I was having to cut eight different corners in each box, and that was just taking a, a, a tremendous amount of time. So basically, for the time it takes me to build three of the previous boxes, I can now build four of these. Um, so I come out okay in that deal. And it actually gives about two inches wider down here, inch and a half wider down here, so you get a, big, a bigger footprint, okay? And there's almost no waste with this box design. I, I, I use almost every square inch of the cedar on this box design. So it's a win-win for everybody. I don't have to raise the prices for y'all and y'all get a bigger box. Okay, so the boxes are water sealed on the outside. It's a clear sealer. Um, if y'all are interested, I do stain them if you want. Uh, I charge extra for that because it's extra work and extra materials. So. But, that's just the ins and outs of that. Now, one of the changes you're gonna see in the old boxes, we had a bit smaller hole here. The reason for that was um, the original hole was just big enough to get the screw head. This is the screw head right here. It was just big enough to get that through there. Um, sometimes that was a balancing act if you were up on a ladder and you couldn't get that aligned perfectly and get that through there. It could give you problems so i've just enlarged this hole so we can just this will just slip through here and remember this this hole this screw goes in the tree and then the box just hangs from that hole okay and then you're going to put your three other retaining screws in here and what i suggest you do is figure out where you're going to mount the box get the screw in the tree go ahead and set those in so you don't have to fiddle with it. Rope this up to you on the ladder. Don't try carrying these boxes up on a ladder. They're just too big and bulky. Rope them up to you, hang the box, and then run these secure screws in. Okay, and you wanna run the center screw in first. Make sure the box is level, run that screw in, and then the other two secure it side to side. Okay, um, the boxes can tilt forward or backwards a little bit. Uh, it's better if they tilt forward just because of rain, the Far, farther back you tilt it, the more chance you have a rain coming in here, okay? And remember, your boxes can be really anywhere from 8 to 15 feet. These are for screech owls. Um, they fly low in the canopy, so you don't need your box 30 feet up in the air, okay? If you were doing a, a barred owl or something like that, yeah, you'd have a bigger box and it'd be higher up in the tree but uh, no higher than 15 feet. Honestly, the sweet spot seems to be around 12 feet. Uh, lower part of the canopy, you wanna try and get the box on a main trunk of the tree if you're gonna do it yourself, okay? The direction does not matter, okay? That is completely false. It does not matter what direction they point. The only thing you wanna make sure of around here, which is in Dallas area, Dallas, Texas, is that the opening right there is not facing west unshaded in a late afternoon 
okay? You just don't want that late afternoon hot sun blasting onto this box. And it's just, it's just gonna drive the owls out of there. It's gonna overheat the box and drive the owls out. So you just need to be cautious of that. Beyond that, that's it. Um, the bedding is pine shavings, not cedar shavings, not hay, not straw. The bedding is pine shavings, okay? Uh, any Kmart, Walmart, pet store, uh, $4 bag, last you guys probably five years. You wanna change the bedding out once a year around Thanksgiving, okay? Because you wanna be ready for the winter nesting, or well, not really the winter nesting, but they're gonna be settling in over the winter time and fall and looking for a nesting site. So you wanna have the boxes ready by then. If you go till Christmas, or something like that, you've gone too long. And you just need to leave the box till the next season. Because the birds have probably already located the box and are thinking about using it. And if you get up there and disturb it, you're gonna run them off. So Thanksgiving, period. I, mean, I, I just cannot emphasize that enough. Um, I've still got, it's March right now, and I've still got people calling me to change the bedding in their boxes. Okay, I mean, I, I just can't emphasize it enough. Be done with it by Thanksgiving. All right? And the way you change the bedding, this bottom panel right here, just pull straight out. Dump the bedding, and you want to put about a coffee can's worth in there. A full, like a folder, a full-size Folgers coffee can. That's about all the bedding you need in there. Don't overdo it, okay? So that's pretty much it for the boxes, guys. Uh, one thing I didn't do last time, we didn't go over the owls that much. So let me look over here to our, our really cheesy drawing I have of my owl face. So a little, little bit of a fact about owls. Their ears are asymmetric, okay? One ear, the right ear is higher than the left ear, okay? And the reason for that is it, it helps them zero in on a target easier. The, the, the difference in timing of the sound hitting those two ears helps them zero in on a target, okay? And their ears are really primarily what they use to hunt with and then they use their eyes. So if you think of the owls in terms of, let's say an air-to-air -air missile, okay? Um, his ears are his radar and his eyes are his infrared. So what they'll do is they'll hear, they have, they have probably the best hearing in the animal kingdom, okay? So they'll, they'll hear something and then they'll turn their head and spot it with their eyes, which are telescopic and then zero in on it. So that's the way they hunt, okay? Who knew, right? So their hearing is as important as their eyes when it comes to hunting. And they're also, I believe, the only animal in, uh, in the animal kingdom whose ears regenerate throughout the course of their life. So an older owl, his hearing, his or her hearing, is as good as it was when she was young or when he was young, okay? Even if they're injured, even if their hearing is injured or impaired, uh, it regenerates. So that's a pretty interesting little fact. And these little horns you see on these, these are not the ears. People call them ear tufts. All they are are little feather tufts up there. Um, having said that, you can, eh, you know, sometimes tell the mood of an owl by looking at, at those. If they're wary about something, they'll, they'll pull the tufts back down. If they're curious, they'll pop their tufts up. But those are not ears, okay? Also, their eyes do not move in the sockets. The, the sockets are actually tubular. Um, so the eyes are fixed in their skull. So they have to turn their neck. And to do that, their necks have got 14 vertebrae in them, okay? The average mammal has got seven vertebrae. With, his, with the exception of a couple sloths, and uh, I think manatees have got fewer than that. But even giraffes have only got seven vertebrae. So owls have got 14. Most birds have from 11 to 25. But owls have got uh, four, 14 vertebrae in their neck, and they can turn their head 270 degrees, okay? And uh, not only does it help them with hunting, but it helps them with preening themselves and cleaning, cleaning themselves off. But uh, 
so that's something of of interest to people and the fact that they their eyes are centered on their the face on the flat face of their skull and look forward they don't have excellent peripheral vision um, they have outstanding vision straight ahead but out here in the periphery they don't so they turn their head okay but that's one reason why you'll see uh, occasionally you'll see a, somebody going down the road and they'll hit like a horned owl or a barn owl and that's usually because the, that owl has zeroed in on a target and is flying straight across the road and he doesn't see the car coming so the owl actually hits the car as a rule um, he just doesn't see it coming out, out to the side he didn't turn his head he's zeroed in he's focused on his target he goes in there and, and whammo he gets hit by a car so that's why you see so many owls hit by cars okay so I'll give you a couple facts about these owls um, they mate for life so if you get an owl pair in your box they're gonna come back every year okay uh, if they have uh, young ones and in the course of that season one of the uh, uh, owls dies or is incapacitated or something happens to it um, the other owl be it male or female will take care of the babies and feed the babies okay and the period of time for the eggs to hatch varies from owl to owl I think on screech owl it's somewhere around 23 24 days but you know 30 days is basically the window for all owls right, right, right around 30 days give or take for all owls for the eggs to hatch okay um, and one thing people do they get these long thin owl boxes those are not good nesting boxes um, they have a very small footprint in them and typically uh, if you get a clutch of eggs in there they all get broken up except maybe one okay so these I've had up to four outlets in these boxes before uh, there's just plenty of room in here for them okay so another thing we'll talk about barn owls for a minute uh, I had heard from somebody had they told me that, man they could sit there and watch by their barn owl flying by and I was curious what they were talking about so I put it to the test. I was working out in an area, almost downtown Dallas, and it had a big field on it. And I noticed one morning, before the sun was coming up, this barn owl would fly down the southern uh, boundary of that field, about around six o'clock in the morning. He'd, he'd fly by about head height, right past me. So I went back there for the next five days, and for the next five days, that owl came past me within a minute of the same time for the next week so i'm going to say yeah that's true at least i observed it um i don't know if that's true of other owls but the barn owls it is true of also i hear a lot of people online talking about the screech owls and how they make too much noise these guys don't make hardly any noise at all they make a trilling noise and um they make a winning a winning noise uh the owls that make the horrible noises that sounds like somebody's bloody dying are the barn owls um, and if you got a barn owl in your yard you're not going to get any sleep I mean you're just not going to get any sleep they, they are horrible horrible noise makers uh, beyond that your typical owl sounds is the who 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 cooks for you sound and uh, from barred owls and horned owls okay uh, we also make barred owl nests I don't sell a lot of them because they're big, they're bulky, they're expensive, and they're expensive to put up. Okay, um, and they actually have, they should go higher in a tree than these. They should go up to about 30 feet. 20 feet is a good round number for a barred owl nest. Um, and then horned owls doesn't do you any good to make a box. They actually take over old hawk nests or uh, osprey nests or eagle nests. They take them over and use them as their uh, as their nest and you can make a fake nest but they, they are extremely high up in a tree okay and one other thing most owls are nocturnals the horned owls operate both day and night and you'll actually see horned owls uh, in the daytime riding thermals and uh, they'll look just like a, 
a vulture with obviously a different shape, but they look like a vulture. And they're just right thermals, and they hunt day or night. Okay, I think that's about it, guys. I don't, I can't really think of anything between the two videos that we haven't gone over. Um, they do, they are eating machines. Uh, they'll eat between three and four mice or rats a night. Uh, you don't need to worry about the owls carrying off your cat or your dog. These screech owls are about the size of a jar of peanut butter, okay? So you can imagine they're not going to do much harm around your house. They will take care of your pest control. They love June bugs. If you guys got June bugs in the summertime, you'll find screech owls all over your lawn uh, eating June bugs as they come out. And they eat small snakes, small lizards, things like that. Uh, for y'all, if you happen to get a squirrel in your box, I haven't had much of a problem. Um, if you get one in there and an owl comes along, as a rule, the squirrel, uh, the owl is going to evict the squirrel. So that's a done deal. Uh, if you get one of these squirrels that you just can't get out of the box, just wrap them inside of the box a few times. Usually it'll run them out, or you can always spray a little water in that hole. And, uh, which I don't really like doing, but you can spray the water in the hole, it'll run the squirrel out, he won't come back. All right. I think that's it, guys. If y'all get one of these and you want to paint it, you need to use a water-based paint on them. Okay? And I don't suggest you do anything on the inside of the box. All right. That's it, guys. Hope y'all have a good one. Hope this helps out a bit for y'all, answers any questions. Y'all have a good one. See ya. Bye. Hey guys, hang on a minute. Don't go anywhere. I forgot about the question and answer session. I got a lot of questions in the last year from people. Uh, let me go over these with you real quick. And I've moved inside a little bit because the wind's blowing. So excuse the kayaks in the background. Uh... Let's start the questions off with questions about the box specifically and mounting it and where to mount it. Um, and I'm going to preface this by saying, and this goes for pretty much all these answers, um, wherever you are, the, the owls are probably already there. Okay? So having said that, um, what's the best time to put up my box? Okay? Really, any time of year. Okay, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to get a nesting pair, it's probably best to have your box up by September. That way the, uh, the owls can locate the box, uh, get the box seasoned in, and some will winter over into it. That's just going to give you a, a better chance of getting a nesting pair. Okay, but the, box, but the owls use the boxes year-round. So any time of year is a good year, is a good year, is a good time any time of the year to put uh, a box up, okay? Uh, another question, can I put an owl box on a fence? Yes, uh, as long as your fence is at least six feet tall, you're a good candidate for that. I've got one customer, has three boxes on his fence, and uh, he's got an eight foot fence, he has three boxes on his fence, and he has three pairs of owls right now. So the answer to your question, as fences are concerned, Yes. Uh, let's see. What about birds and my bird feeders? Well, let's go back to the owls are already there, but you have to remember they're on a different schedule than your regular birds. The owls, for the most part, are nocturnal. So as long as you don't have the owl box smack in the middle of your uh, bird feeders, uh, you're going to be okay. Uh, if you have a nesting pair, they may run off other birds, but they're not going to actively hunt the other birds any more or less than they would otherwise if the box wasn't there. Okay. Uh, one advantage you've got with the bird feeders is you're putting down bird seed, so you're probably attracting mice and rats anyways. So in the evening, they're going to come out and so are the owls, and the owls will take care of that little opportunity for you. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's one. Uh, owls and predators. What, what's a predator to an owl? Uh, typically, um, you know, the screech owls are small, so if they get on the ground, 
cat might get him, a bobcat might get him, even a dog. Um, it's few and far between. But uh, larger owls are their predators. So barred owls and horned owls will, uh, if they get a chance, catch a screech owl and kill it. Uh, let's see. Here's one. I have a bat box. Are the owls going to interfere with my bats? Once again, we'll go back to the owls already there. So the owls are already there, whether you have a box or not. Um, typically, they won't catch a bat in flight, but they may stage themselves to catch a bat coming in or out of a bat box or wherever the bat's at. It may be sitting in a crevice in a wall at your house. You may have a nest, a crevice in a tree, something like that. So the answer to your question is, yeah, they'll feed on bats, but it's not predominant. Okay, it's no more than usual by putting the box up. And how the owl is going to be with my pets? Remember, these guys, these screech owls, are the size of a jar of peanut butter, so they're not going to be carrying your pets off. That's for certain. Um, they will dive on dogs and even people uh, if there's a nest nearby, and they're just trying to protect the nest. They won't hurt you. They're not going to carry off your pets but they, they get territorial when they're nesting, okay? Uh, let's see. Oh, here's one for you. I hear a lot of people get a little overwhelmed by this. Um, I hear, they, they say, I hear the box has to have an unobstructed view. That's partially true. Um, the best place to put your box is on the trunk of the tree on or near the uh, bottom run of branches. Okay, that way the flight path is unobstructed. The owls have got a 20 inch, about a 20 inch wingspan, so they gotta be able to fly straight in without folding the wings or maneuvering in between little branches and things like that in the tree. So you, you need to be aware of that. Um, what you don't wanna do is bury the box up in a tree where it can't be seen or can't be flown into easily okay so the more obvious the box is the better oh let's see what else we got uh water features um people ask i hear that there has to be a water feature near my my owl box that's pretty much a relative term um, almost anywhere you go within about a mile there's going to be probably a creek or a river or a pond and that will do the trick. Uh, but having said that, you know, a lot of people have got bird baths, um, they got koi ponds, they got swimming pools. So all of those things count as water features. Even people who have clogged up gutters and the water is sitting in their gutters from rain, uh, that counts as a water feature. So water features are not a huge uh, deal to concern yourself with, but if you want to put a bird bath or something like that in your yard, um, that, that, that will only help the situation all right here's a good one what is a group of owls called I hear that crows a group of crows is called a murder a group of owls is called a parliament okay um, other words for them is a wisdom of owls or a congress of owls but a parliament of owls is the primary term used. Um, there are some specific ones though. Barn owls. Barn owls. A group of barn owls is, cause, is called a stable of owls. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. Mumble, mumble, mumble. Oh, putting more than one box in your yard. With street owls, the industry standard is about 50 feet apart. Okay, and I've put these up to 30 feet apart as long as they're not facing each other. Um, it's best to have them parallel or facing away from each other. Okay, and I've, I've had as many as three together in a yard with no problems. Um, if you happen to be into barred owls or something like that, those boxes need to be about 100 or 200 feet apart and much higher in the tree and then um, if you're going to try and get something like a, a horned owl um, you're talking miles mile and a half apart on a, a nesting roost 
and uh, most people don't do that. Usually, uh, horned owls are, are left up to conservation groups. Oh, uh, let's see. Are my owls going to recognize me? Uh, sort of yes. Um, they're not like crows. They don't recognize your face like crows do, but they recognize your shape and your mannerisms. So an owl will get used to you and your pets in your yard and will just sit in the opening and look at you. Um, but you'll bring a friend over and the owl will sulk down into the hole because he doesn't recognize the movements or sounds that that friend makes. Okay, so it's a yes, no answer. Like I said, they don't recognize faces like crows do, but they do recognize your shape and your habits. Oh, let's see. We've got a few more here. How do I tell the difference between the male and female owl? I have a pair of owls, and they're two different colors. Does that matter? So it's a two-part answer. Um, the female owl is typically going to be larger, okay? So that's the way, that's, that's how you tell the difference between the male and female. The color doesn't matter. These screech owls come in two different colors. They're a, they have a gray stage, and then they have a, a kind of a red-brown, rusty brown color. Uh, the color doesn't matter as far as the, the gender goes. And genetically, the colors don't matter as to what their babies come out as. It's, it's, there's no dominant um, gene that I'm aware of. Uh, so you may have two gray owls mate, and they're still going to get a red owl out of the batch, maybe. Or you may have two red owls mate, and they may get nothing but gray owls. So that doesn't seem to matter. And uh, right now, we have several pairs of both color and uh, they're sitting on eggs right now. So that answers that question. Oh, let's see what else we got. Mumble, mumble. Uh, horned owls. That's about it, guys. Um, I don't think there's anything else that anybody's written me that is that I haven't already talked about. Yeah, that's going to be it. Um... Hang on a minute. Nope, that's it. That's going to be it. That's the questions I've gotten that, that really matter. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Stick around. I'm going to put some pictures up of some owls that we have gotten in the last year. And uh, like I said, I hope you enjoy this. Hope this helps out a lot. Uh, feel free to, to uh, email me at tacticalyakin at gmail.com. And I'll answer any questions you got. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great one. Bye.